Today on tri -Curl Studios, we do a high gain amp shootout between the Marshall JCM 800-2203X, the X is for reissue, and the Marshall DSL 100HR. Now I have to reiterate here, this is a high gain only shootout. So you're basically going to hear metal and hard rock. Uh, you're not going to hear any cleans or anything like that. If you are looking for a direct comparison between both of these amps with no metal being played and no pedals being used, take a look in the description down below. I haven't made the video as of yet, but when I do, I'll put a link there. And if you also want to see uh, individual videos for the amps, uh, with playing metal or even playing no metal with no pedals, take a look in the description down below. I'll leave links to those videos there too. Okay, so we do have a very basic uh, shootout here. I have two sound samples, both of which I used an Ibanez TS9. Uh, all level, no gain, and the tone is set to about 2 o'clock. Uh, you wouldn't generally boost a DSL 100 HR. However, uh, when I went from the GSCM 800 to the DSL 100 HR, it sounded very good. It had a little more push to it. Um, so it kind of balanced out a few things there with it. So I decided to keep it for both sound samples. Two sound samples, the first of which is a Gibson Les Paul Traditional in E flat, um, and that is a semi scooped um, sound sample. And then the Second one is an Explorer in drop C, and that particular one has a little more balanced uh, mids in the mix.
So there you go, there's the shootout between the Marshall JCM 800-2203X, again the X is for reissue, it's a 2016 model, and the Marshall DSL-100HR, not to be confused with the DSL-100H, which is the first iteration, and definitely not to be confused with the JCM 2000 DSL-100, that is uh, the initial and the original version of it, but this is a Vietnamese uh, with a resonance control rather than a deep switch. All right, so let's talk about my reaction here to, or my thoughts, I guess, uh, to the shootout between the 800 and the DSL-100HR. Um, I kind of knew that I would hear very well-balanced mids in the JCM-800, that low end and the high end that, very, that falls very favorably uh, for the amp. It's, it's not too much, um, and it just allows a lot of other frequencies to come in. Um, yes, cymbals and hi-hats and, and stuff like that. They, they, they seem to be a little more pronounced in the mix when you're uh, dealing with an 800. Uh, the DSL-100HR is... I guess the comparison between the two would be sort of like it's a dual rectifier. It's not, but it uh, has its own little sound. But there's a lot more low end to it, and there's a lot more high end inherently in the uh, amp itself. So um, I, I, again, will agree where someone in direct comparison to an 800, uh, or with an 800 to the DSL-100HR, if you're going to say the DSL-100HR sounds more scooped uh, or scooped in comparison to the 800, I'll tend to agree with you there. Just because the 800 has a lot of, uh, a lot of mids in them and um, they're not like brittle high end or, or like in your face low end. It's just enough balls to get you through. Uh, whereas the DSL-100HR, there's, there's definitely a lot of mids to it, a lot more than a dual rectifier. Um, and it has that really deep, thudding low end to it and semi-piercing high end to it. So uh, in each occasion when you're dialing it in, you have to be careful of that presence knob and be careful of that uh, treble control. Uh, my presence, I in this one I actually kept it uh, at, at noon, where generally I'd keep it around like 10.30 or 11. And the... Uh, the the high end, your 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 treble control, I kept that around 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the mix. Otherwise, it can get, especially when you're raising the volume, um, it, it can get a little piercing and a little too much.
Also, the DSL 100HR obviously has a lot more gain to it uh, versus the 800. I still firmly believe with a boosted 800 at the appropriate, you gotta have your walls shaking. You, you can't not have your walls shaking. Uh, but at the volume where your walls are shaking, uh, it, it, as long as you know you do have that volume, you don't need to bring the gain control past two o'clock. Um, I generally will keep it between like one o'clock and three o'clock, never really more than three o'clock, eh, special occasions. Uh, but that should be enough uh, to get into high gain territory. The uh, DSL 100HR, I know people are gonna ask if I use the tone shift, no I did not. Um, and I used OD1 because OD2 I find sort of sounds, when you're raising the volume, it, it starts to give this weird fuzz uh, to the sound. So it's almost like an octave fuzz, sort of. Probably not the best way to describe it, but that's that's how I feel with it. And OD1, uh, especially in this, boosted, there was a lot of push to that sound. It, it, it really came through in the mix. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the gain control there, um, I kept that around 11 o'clock. For that, this type of an amp where there's a lot of gain to it, I'm generally gonna keep things between like, probably 9.30 and maybe one o'clock. One o'clock, that's, that's a lot of gain for uh, this type of an amp, and you're gonna start to lose a lot of definition there, um, and it may not be as pleasing to you. So there you go, there is the shootout. There are my reactions to it. Um, I'd love to hear what you think in between the two. I know a lot of people, whenever I use the uh, DSL 100 uh, in a shootout versus like any other amp that I've done it with, a lot of people will say, yeah, the, the DSL 100 HR sounds better because it sounds exactly like a JCM 800. Um, I tend to disagree with that. However, um, you know, this at least gives you that chance of hearing both amps directly compared with each other. But of course, it's it's with someone else's hands and someone else's ears. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I've been Ryan from TriCrow Studios. I say good day.